Uh, thank you so much for taking the time, Sue and Jen. Congratulations on season two of the show. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, if I could start with you, this show has been celebrated uh, for its powerful storytelling and, and rich character development. How do you approach the challenge of adapting such a beloved source material and complex novel for television and then bring it into a second season? Well, first of all, in my job is made a gazillion times easier by being able to have the IP be as great as it is. Like, I mean, countless writers have worked on IP, including me, that's not as strong. <laughs> so this is such, it's such a joy. You want to name them? <laughs> yeah, I'll name kidding. you all of them. But <laughs> also, like, you know, we have this writer's room, and I feel like so little, I wish the writers could, you know, be able to, you guys can see all the writer's room in the process. But just so many huge brains, great writers come together to think about this story for 12, 13 weeks. You know, it, a lot of heavy lifting is done there. And Jen, you know, when you talk about the heavy lifting that the writers are putting together and Sue is helping Shepard, um, it's all to also help, you know, your character and Solomon and, and really trying to uh, bring that character to life. What's been the most challenging and rewarding aspect of bringing that story to life, especially, you know, as the series ex explores all the themes of heritage, identity, and personal growth that it does? I think the hardest element of, of this character has been... Uh from a technical standpoint, the language, um, the mastery of the languages that this character speaks. Um, having been born and raised in Japan, he's fluent in Japanese, but in both Osaka, uh, which is the Kanto dialect, and also the Tokyo dialect. And um, he also speaks Korean, having grown up in a Korean household, but with a Japanese accent, because he is in, a, in Japan. And then also his English um, that he would have learned in Japan, international school, but also in Connecticut and New York in like uh, 70s and 80s, I tried to adjust my English just a little bit to feel maybe, you know, not so much like I'm speaking colloquially now. All of that was, I mean, language is always a huge part of finding a character, but especially with Solomon, especially with the source material, especially with the cultural context, the language was so crucial to the storytelling. Um, when characters use one word for, you know, they use the Korean word for grandmother in the middle of a Japanese sentence, that, that means something. Or they use one word, Japanese word for real estate in the middle of a Korean sentence that they're speaking, that means something. There's a reason behind every single sentence and um, being structured that way. And so similarly, because of all of that hard work that everyone in the writer's room was doing, <laughs> I felt it, you know, up, uh, incumbent upon me to then nail it, you know, try to get the dialects and the accents and the fluency as accurate as possible because it was, it's, it's not just, um, it's so much a part of the storytelling. Like how he speaks actually indicates so much and I wanted to really honor that as much as I could. Oh, thank you. What a beautiful answer that was. I guess um, as my time runs out, this question is to both of you, Sue, we'll start with you. After people start to dive into season two, um, what do you want them to take away from th this season? I mean, I hope they take away the same thing that they took away in season one, is that it's a story that feels both familiar and new, and that leaves them emotionally both comforted but also a little bit raw, and that we always say after watching Pachinko that like, we hope everyone calls home, you know, and reconnects. And Jim? I think it's the... It made me, the show made me, the season two really made me think about the worlds of difference between generations, how much things change. Um, everything, technology, history, geography, you know what I'm saying? Like language, it's because it's so easy to forget how different things were. Um, and I think it's, there's something, there's wisdom to, obviously there's wisdom to be gained, but I just mean remembering how quickly things can change within a family, right? That's what the show centers on. But that Solomon and Sanja, young Sanja, were merely two generations apart, but they exist in such different realities. Um, I find that infinitely fascinating because that's, we have countless of those examples, you know, in everybody's lives. Well, thank you both, and uh, congratulations again on the show. Thank, thank you so you. much.